Hey everybody, this is Galen Pyle, president of Chess PDX, here with Jason Segan, local chess expert of Portland, Oregon. So this is Reality Chess TV. So we're going to be talking about Chess Base 11 and Houdini today. And we're kind of doing like a live install, and then we're going to try to test Houdini. Uh, you know, we might have some hiccups on the way. In fact, we probably will. But that's the idea because we're trying to give you a real experience of what it is actually like to be trying to use the software. Because I'm a, I'm a pretty advanced computer guy, but sometimes this stuff is a little bit clunky, even to me. So uh, I'm going to let Jason talk about the features of Houdini. And this is chess base we have here, as well as in this folder, I have a copy of Houdini 2 Chess that I, I paid for. I have the license and everything for it. So I think we're going to try to install it. Uh, why don't you tell us about, about Houdini? Well, uh, Houdini once installed is one of the most one of the premier chess engines on the market. Um, it's known for its uh, uh, more human-like evaluation of positions than other engines, uh, whereas others uh, tend to be very materialistic and to uh, underrate initiative. Houdini uh, accurately assesses how, in a practical game, uh, maybe having sacrificed an exchange for a very strong attack can in fact be a slight advantage rather than uh, saying that the side clinging desperately to material is a little better. It's uh, t tends to swing things in favor of the way that a human would see it. So uh, as for the installation, um, now seems as good a time as any to get going on that. <laughs> no valid license found. Um, what about license.txt? I think I got a license oh, yeah, in there. I, I, Double click it. Let's maybe make it bigger. Yeah. Let's see. So that's just a README file, actually. So maybe I need to find. There's some way you open it, like within chess, but I don't remember how I did it. Okay. All right, chess players, we're back. We took a little quick break. So we were trying to install Houdini. Honestly, this is reality chess TV. We have approximately no idea how to install it once you install it it's awesome but it's hard to install so i guess we're going to make another video uh once we figure that out so we're going to switch gears a little bit and i do have big database 2010 so jason's going to talk more about big database and you know he's going to try to show you the features of it we'll see if this works yeah so uh big database you can see uh goes back pretty far in history you have uh greco playing various no names here and smashing all comers with uh, sacrificial E4, E5 lines, of course. And it'll run all the way to the president four years ago. Um, and it's searchable. You can install an opening key by which you can uh, file through it move by move, just like you would have in a chess base or a shredder database, but with far more games. And uh, I believe the total here is about four million, so four and a half million. And uh, it... it it's obviously a very helpful tool for analysis, especially if one can install Houdini to go through a game and, uh, and measure, uh, me me measure by what, uh, on what level the games were played, you know, where Greco might have gone wrong, where no name could have saved it, um, all kinds of things you can do with this database. All right, cool. So you can see Fritz 13 has two and a half million games. Big database has four and a half million. So Jason, try to try to drill into this and, and show us, you know, how to actually use this database. Because I can see all the games going back to the 16th century, but how can I use this in, in a more practical sense? Okay, so. So many games that it can be a little bit hard to try to browse them. Yeah, hopefully this video goes viral just because it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be our best case scenario here at this point. But we're almost there. We're at 814. We really need a tree format. I mean, this is like this is like useless trying to just find A15. I mean, okay, this is just straight painful. So let's <laughs> let's, let's stop guy. doing that. Uh, sure, let's open one of these games. A 67 move game. Played. Uh... So you can analyze this game and see what happened. 
So it is like a Rady Slav here. This is all normal. This is all Grandmaster approved. Uh, uh, oh, what if we clicked one of these buttons, like add Kibitzer or create UCI engine? Uh, okay. Oh! Epiphany. Uh, no validation. None. Well, click. Okay, okay. Click add Kibitzer. Click add Kibitzer and go to Fritz 13 because I know, I think Fritz 13 is going to uh, at least work. Oh, you just. No, no, no. It's still there. I think it's still open somewhere. <laughs> no, no. You just uninstalled Houdini for me. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, it reappears if you close chest space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's all, it's all for fun. Um, this is reality chess TV. I'm pretty sure. But here we do actually get analysis with Fritz 13. Yeah. Uh, I believe the book move here is E3, but what white does still works because it's really passive. This passive. <laughs> passive. Passive. Huh. Yeah. yeah, okay. So black's clearly better here. Uh, maybe not. Anymore. So the, the right here, here's the Fritz 13. This is what's analyzing it. One CPU means there's one processor going. So one of the things that we want to show in the future is having a multi-processor um, engine working, right? So that's, so we are analyzing this game. We did get an engine working on it. Um, but I think getting at least a tree of the openings would really help a lot because this is this is really, unpractical um so let's see if we go to the other screen over here what do you think is there any way to possibly get a tree maybe cannibalize like what who has a feature for cannibalize or <laughs> Fine double games. I mean, it's just got like way too many features. Um, cannibalize. Let's do that. So here, for example, is a tree, right? I got this. This is from uh, Kasparov's Nidorf video series, and I got. I do have a tree here, and so this is practical. This is like helpful, right? But what I wish I had is a whole tree for for the big database. So I guess we're all wishing, but uh, but it might just not be exact. I don't know. Do you think it's indexed that way? I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you hope so? <laughs> like for somebody else or? <laughs> <laughs> I have thus far been unsuccessful in my attempts to set up my own computer. Um, but I'm holding out hope that there's a feature I have not yet discovered that allows me to do that. All right, so maybe, maybe in 2015, I'll figure out how to use my big database 2010. Yeah. I mean, at the start of this video, we were all enthusiastic about big database, but now I just kind of want to cannibalize it. Cannibalize <laughs> <laughs> That's why they built the feature. It's so you can't find you can't find the tree. <laughs> All right. So um, we're gonna cannibalize the the database. Thanks for watching. This is Reality Chess TV with Chess PDX. Go to our website www.chesspdx.com. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye. A game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first, right? Before you move.